thank you so much. Thank you so much. So uh, as you said, even though I don't speak Romanian, but I kind of understand what you said. So today we will talk about guidance on open educational practices during school closure, which is in line with UNESCO OER recommendations. So before I give a, a brief introduction about this handbook, I would like first to thank uh, my Romanian colleagues, especially uh, Prof. Gabriela, Prof. Uh, Carmen, and Prof. Diana for their amazing collaboration to produce both the English version and the, the Romanian version of this handbook. And I would like to say that both uh, versions are now published on the official website uh, of our institute, so you can find them there. So today I will just give a brief introduction, then I will leave uh, the, the details to my colleagues to further present, present them. So as you all know, uh, COVID-19 hits all over the world. And according to the latest statistics from uh, UNESCO, we have over 1 billion students which were affected from, from 177 uh, countries. Especially in China, we have almost 300 million students which were affected. So as you can see here, exactly we have 200 million, uh, 78 thousand students so which is uh, which is a very huge number and as you all know uh, covid-19 started uh, or hit first in china and therefore we had to act quickly and we had to find solutions in order to maintain education for all those students so in this context we have produced several books for instance we have produced the handbook on, on facilitating flexible learning and this handbook uh, was translated to several languages, as you can see, English, Chinese, Arabic, Portuguese, and Korean. Also, we have published active learning at home. I'm not sure why my screen is changing by itself. And also we have presented active learning at home and flexible learning during campus closure. So we have published several books. And one of these books, which we will talk about today, is guidance on open educational practices. So as you can see here, we have five parts in this book. So first we talk about the background of using open educational practices. Then we talk about open educational practices or applying open educational practices. Then we talk about the OER competencies for applying open educational practices. Then we talk about uh, typical OER enabled distance learning strategies. And finally, conclusions. So as I said, I will try to briefly give uh, the structure of this handbook, and I leave the details to be explained by my colleagues here. So first question that everyone can answer, why did we focus on using open educational practices during this COVID-19? And the answer is easy. So first of, first of all, as you know, uh, COVID-19 was unpredictable. Therefore, we had to act quickly. And if we say we had to act quickly, we need to shift our content from the traditional uh, lectures, face-to-face -face lectures, to online lectures. And if we need to do this from the beginning or from the scratch, it will take us a lot of time to prepare content, to put them online, etc. So one of the easiest way is to use open educational resources. So open educational resources can be found online and they are uh, freely accessible and you can use them according to the way you want, of course, in respecting open license. So in this way, teachers can save a lot of time. So instead of creating our own resources, we can directly reuse several resources which are published in very popular uh, OER uh, repository. This is one. Second, we have teacher learner isolations. So as you all know, in online learning, we have uh, high dropout rates. So if we talk now, uh, so if we talk now about using OER, we could talk about social networking, and we are talking about open educational practices where students can collaborate together. So in this way, we can overcome the isolation of both teachers and learners. And three, if we are talking about pedagogical approaches, we can talk about active learning, which is supported by open educational practices. Therefore, using OER and OEP during COVID-19 is very useful. And also, during uh, the end of 2019, UNESCO has released uh, the OER recommendations. And during this recommendation, we have five areas or five objectives. So as you can see, building capacity of stakeholders, developing supportive uh, policy, encouraging inclusive and equitable quality OER, 
So in this handbook, what we tried to do? So we tried to fulfill all of these five objectives through different stories, through different recommendations, etc. For instance, we can give you an example. Here you can see one of the recommendations of UNESCO is to provide frameworks that support the development of OER products. So in line with this recommendation provided by UNESCO, we have developed an OEP framework. And OEP framework could easily help researchers to implement OEP online. So what we did, we have, did, uh, we have conducted uh, a systematic literature review, and we have identified over 20 OEP definitions given by several researchers online. Then we have analyzed these definitions and we have extracted all the needed dimensions to create this framework. So now it is easy to uh, go back and or to refer to this framework in order to understand how could you implement OEP. For instance, if you are talking about OEP, we are talking about open assessment, we are talking about open collaborations and open teaching. One of the other examples, or for instance, UNESCO mentioned, mentioned that uh, we need to provide mechanisms for the implementing and application of OER, as well as encouraging the feedback from stakeholders uh, for constant improvement of OER. So in order to have constant improvement of OER, we have identified uh, the challenges of OEP, for instance, that each researcher or each educator needs to know. Therefore, they can consider the, uh, these challenges during the implementation of OEP, for instance, Schools and universities may find it challenging to adapt their pedagogy to OEP because OEP now it's more based on practices and it's based that learners uh, are active learners and they co-create or they co-produce the learning content, which could be very challenging for uh, for some universities, especially if you are talking about the culture and especially when you are talking about the mentality of some educators. Therefore, one of the challenges that we mentioned. Also, we can see here that students are more familiar with traditional learning approaches. Hence, they may find it difficult to be self-regulated and adapt to an OEP structured course. So as we said, uh, in OEP structured course, students need to help the teacher to improve, for instance, the learning content. For instance, I, can, I could put or publish an open chapter, then the students could enhance it by providing more references, by adding more paragraphs, by developing more of the content. So here we can talk about the students being uh, active students and being co-producers of the learning content. So as you can see here, we have provided just brief examples of some recommendations provided by UNESCO and how we could take these uh, recommendations into consideration in order to facilitate the implementation of OER and OEP. Also, during this handbook, we have collected several uh, stories from different uh, countries about how OER and OEP uh, was implemented uh, during COVID-19. We have different stories. For instance, I can give you this uh, short stories, which is about uh, teaching family education course uh, during COVID-19. So we have developed the family education course, which is based on uh, OEP. For instance, here we can see that the teacher releases the chapter as OER. And then uh, we here we have, for instance, the, stud the students had to work in teams under the supervision of the teacher to enhance the teaching materials by searching for new problems in each age category. So here we have different problems for each age category. The teacher listed, for instance, three or four problems for each uh, age category. However, he asked, the students to find more examples or more problems. And he here became more of as a facilitator. So as a facilitator, he provided more references. He tried to guide the students and uh, the students had to do them uh, some uh, searching. And here we are talking about the connective bits approach and find more, uh, more uh, examples. Also, we can see here that the students worked uh, in teams using Tencent documents in order to uh, support open collaborations and for students to see each other's progress. And at the end, all the chapters are collected and published as an open textbook. So as an open textbook, therefore, uh, teachers can refer to this uh, family education textbook and also enhance it in the next years. And the students can also refer to this textbook and enhance it in 
in their coming years. So we are currently trying to uh, write a study about uh, this example. And thank you so much. So as I said, I, I tried to keep it very quick and uh, I tried to uh, pr present the overview of this handbook. And I'm pretty sure that my colleagues here will further give more details and more examples and more stories about uh, OER and OEP. Thank you so much.